I was recording my first solo record and we had a lot of mutual friends. I'd never met Steve, but a lot of people were saying you should work with him. Your voices would sound nice together. One day we met in the studio of a friend of ours called Martin Tereff. And Martin's worked with James Morrison, Jason Mraz, won loads of Grammys, recently with Train. And I ended up joining the band that Steve was fronting. And, uh, and we realized our voices worked really well together. Here we are. Ten yeah. years later. Yeah. I think we've been quite old fashioned in the way we've approached this album, in that we've tried to make it hang together and be coherent all the way through, certainly feel wise and, and lyrically. But we've tried to keep each song as an entity within itself that can kind of stand up and do its own thing. We didn't know how it would sound, really, until we got in the studio. Mm. But it sounds great. Is this line of love all that we know? Can you let me in to let it go? Cause I'll take the last hit for you. I'll shine a light in the dark. I'll find your heart ignited. Gonna find out just who we are. A lot of the songs on the album are written from personal experiences, um, focusing on the dark side of romance, possibly. Um, and, and the good side of romance. I like to dwell on the dark side. <laughs> the door is half open With one foot in the hall When the glass is broken There's nowhere left to fall The ghost of me and you is just a, a piano and voices. But when we went in the studio and got the voices together, it was just, you had goosebumps. It was just, it was ghostly. It was ghostly. <laughs> Sun would always shine But words won't always rhyme I knew this record was special and, and working with Steve was special because we both live at opposite ends of the country and there'd be times when I would be writing a particular song not knowing that Steve was writing this song and we phone each other up and the songs would kind of, they'd become one, they, they made sense, they were a story and that happened with quite a few of the songs on the record. I think the album is a mixture of a lot of different styles. I love country music. Rosalie comes from kind of a folk background. So it's got some up-tempo stuff. It's got some very, for me, meaningful and deep and melancholic stuff as well. I grew up, grew up listening to folk and harmonies like the Everly Brothers and Emily Harris and Grant Parsons. And, and for me, it was the harmony is so important, you know, the, they just melt it into one. We recorded a version of I Don't Know Why, a song by Sean Colvin. I did a version of it years ago when I was a solo artist. And we've, we both loved the song. 
I used to sing that song when I was 13 because we toured, I was in a family band and we toured with Sean in the States and um, I fell in love with that song and I sang it throughout my teenage years so it's, that's another connection with that song as well. I remembered way back when there was a brilliant video treatment for I Don't Know Why and uh, quite a radical one actually. So we decided to make it. I got in touch with a couple of friends who are brilliant filmmakers and we made it. And we're really proud of how it came out. It's beautiful. It's a bit shocking and a bit, you know, it was a bit cold for a while, but... Um... <laughs> Years ago, I, I, I was Jesus. <laughs> I wore a loincloth for a living. I know it's, it's a hard, it was a hard gig. There were posters of me as Jesus all over London. And one day, I got a taxi into the show and a taxi driver making idle chit chat said, oh, so what do you do? And as we turned the corner, there was a huge poster of me as Jesus. And I said, oh, that's me there. And he went, Jesus, and then he crashed the car. Tonight we took a taxi into town. Hit some traffic at the bypass. Fast forward 16 or so years later, and I thought about that story and the guy nearly killing us both in the taxi. <laughs> and um, I get an email literally a few hours later from some people who were making a TV show about Jesus Christ Superstar. And I thought, wow, isn't that a weird coincidence that it should all come around again? So one of the songs we wrote for the record is, is called 50 for Jesus. The idea that if I'd have taken another part in life, kind of a sliding door thing where sometimes you make a decision and it will have impact and resonate down the rest of your life. This album is about songs, it's about the words and the melody, and about our voices. Something magical has happened for us when we sing. It moves me, it gives me goosebumps, and something happens mm. when, when we make sound together. So hopefully we've managed to capture that in some way on the record, and uh, we just hope other people will, will kind of feel it as well. I